Hello everybody, it's Kevin from Matt Practical. Um, so this morning I'd like to talk to you about uh, line work and graphic styles inside of Illustrator. So previously we looked at symbols and how those can represent all the points in cartography. Um, so we've got uh, some uh, of our palettes out right here, our panels, a symbol, the swatches, stroke, and layers. Layers is super important. Uh, we're going to need a couple more, so I'm going to go up to Window and then go down and find graphic styles so there's our graphic styles palette and uh, the appearance palette happens to be right next to it so we're gonna grab that one as well so um, these two are gonna be key to us working on our lines so um, I'm just gonna grab the little line tool so line segment tool right there with the backslash you can bring it out um, there we go. And if I um, take a look right now, uh, a line doesn't have any fill, so it's only going to be this black stroke. And if I click once and drag, you can see that you make a line. If you hold down shift, like I've uh, said before, the modifier keys can help. It'll make it totally horizontal or on a 45 or totally vertical. So we'll just go with a horizontal line there. And, and then I'll do the V tool. So I'll hit V on the, um, on the keyboard, and that just gets my selection tool right here. Um, so uh, you can see right now that this has a stroke of one uh, size if we were to bump that up oops it has to be obviously selected and then see how we go bigger 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 right there so now we've got a stroke that is 11 let's make it 12 so that's a nice fat line we rarely use that in cartography but it helps you know just for you guys to see I'll zoom in a little bit um, center it up when I'm centering things up I'm just pressing the space bar and that turns whatever tool you have into the hand tool then you click and you can move your whole page let go and then when you let go of space it goes back to the tool you had and in this case it was the selection tool and it lives right now here in layer one it's always good to name our layers we're going to call this lines there we go hit enter um, and it's blue which works for me right now so uh, you can see that this is just a black line with one stroke and that is also represented over here in the appearance palette now the appearance palette uh, allows you to build things up so as I've said before there's multiple ways to do everything in Illustrator so as you can see the stroke is right here in, inside the appearance palette it shows me its uh, opacity its color I could click on that and it will give me options for all of the swatches that I have over here um, now I can also click on the word stroke and I get basically its own little stroke palette where I can change its size um, and I can do other things like turn it into a dash line but we and we'll get into that in a second so for this particular one we're going to go with 12 but the interesting thing about the appearance palette is you can add extra strokes and fills so right now I can go down here and hover and I'll say add new stroke and it adds one that's exactly what was selected before so we're going to stay with that 12 point underneath it so it's 12 point black but the one above it I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller by quite a bit say five great and then I'm going to change its color to say yellow and it looks like I need to take it down even further so there we go maybe two point and then click off so now we have a divided highway right so that is um, a, a line style that we might use when we're trying to style out roads um, usually though it would be dashed right unless it's you know you can't cross the, the yellow um, so let's go ahead and open up this stroke we have to select it first and I'm going to open up that stroke palette and hit that dash line and then here I can change the dash and the gap so right now the dash is 12 points wide what if I took that down to say 5 and you'll see how that goes and I can have actually a gap that is uh, 5 as well or I could have a gap that is larger so actually let me show you what a gap that is like say 10 and I'll hit enter and now you can see that on screen so there we have a nice divided highway now this is just a vector object right now it's just a piece of line work if we were to take and drag this into the graphic style palette uh, maybe it won't let me drag it I know it'll let me drag symbols but certainly with it selected I can go to graphic styles new graphic style and just call this like divided highway HWY alright great and now that is one of my graphic styles that can be applied to any line so if I were to put another line out here and right now it's just a single stroke dashed and I were to hit divided highway da -da, then I get that um, so it applies it to every single individual thing now when you're applying graphic styles it has a bunch of defaults in here I don't like any of those I'm gonna get rid of all those ones because they're things like um, uh, 
um, you know, like drop shadows and stuff that I would always do on my own. So I thought I could select all of them at once. Let's see. Maybe I can't. Maybe I could do. Oh, no, there we go. So I just selected them all by holding down shift and get rid of those. All right. So now I just have the default in my divided highway. Um, the nice thing about graphic styles is that if you make a change to the actual style itself, it's a global change. It'll go everywhere. So let's say that um, I had some roads on here and I decided, oh, I don't want these to be uh, a divided highway or I just want to change that gap. So if I were to go in and say, mm, I want that thing to be tight, I'm going to take it back down to five points on my dash for the gap. And I just changed it. And you can see now I have two different styles. If I were to um, go under the appearance palette with this little three tab drop down, and tell it to redefine the graphic style divided highway, boom, you'll see that it changed it down here. So imagine if you had hundreds of roads and you decided you wanted to change a bunch of them. Okay, so you could do that all at once if you've applied graphic styles. Now, something to be really careful of is graphic styles, uh, they need to be applied to objects. So if you need to select a bunch of roads and apply a graphic style to it, that's what you want to do. Um, let me make another graphic style and show what happens if you accidentally apply it to the layer. So you want it to be applied to individual objects in the layer palette, not the layer itself. And I'll show you why. So I'm just going to make another quick line here, hold down shift. I don't want that to be dashed anymore, so I'll turn off dash. And I'm going to make this stroke actually white, and then I'm going to add another stroke to it and make that underneath one black and make it a little bit wider. All right, cool. So, what, sorry. Well, so, what we see here now is what we would call a cased road, right? So, you've got a road layer that has, um, has a casing around the outside of it, and I can make that into a graphic style too. East Road. There we go. Now um, it's a graphic style on its own. So I can have that one, or, and I can change this to a cased road really easy just by clicking the different graphic style, right? Um, however, if I was to have this guy, and I, I'm going to go up here to my lines and I apply cased to the entire layer. So now you're getting some really funky things, but if I were to go to this particular one and then say I wanted it to be a divided highway, I don't get the right look because the case is still stuck in there. So I've messed it up. What I need to always remember is only apply graphic styles to individual vector objects. Now to solve this problem, what I'm going to have to do is select the whole entire layer and then go in the appearance palette and tell it to clear the appearance. And now it's cleared the appearance from the layer, but the individual vector objects still have their styles added to them. Okay, um, so we can do all different kinds of things with lines. So if I were to get my pen tool here, uh, there we go, and uh, I'm going to choose a blue stroke, and let's just pull out. So I'm clicking once and then holding my um, my mouse down while I pull out these toggles, and that helps me create these Bezier curves, right? There we go, and then stop making. So I've created like a little river style possibly, but a lot of times we want our streams to look like they do and emulate the, the real world. So either in the appearance palette where you can get to the stroke or back up in our normal stroke palette, there's this thing called uh, profiles and right now it's just a uniform profile. What about if I was to go in here and have it a width profile and so now it's tapering from large down where it's emptying into another river or a body of water then all the way up into the watershed where it's barely starting. So it's kind of a nice look. And then if you change the actual width of it, it'll change just the side that's still full size. So now it's three, right? Um, if for some reason you needed it to go the other way, all you have to do is hit this little button right here, which is to flip along the axis. And now it's going the other way, right? So that's another way that you can you can use these different tools to give you nice different line styles. So you can set yourself up with a ton of graphic styles that represent every piece of line work on your map and it can be very helpful. So this might be my river style. Now when you apply that to a bunch of lines and 
let me go ahead and select all these guys and just say those were actually rivers, you can see that it applied them all with that specific um, profile to it. And if it happens to be wrong, you would just have to flip it, right? So that's what you would do with those. Those are back to divided highways, back to my cased roads. Now, something interesting about cased roads, let's draw another line over the top of this guy and give it the cased roads look. And you'll see that when they intersect like that, it um, you get these lines that are over crossing and what you'd like is it just kind of be knocked out right so the way there's a couple ways to do that if I select them all and I go to object does group do it let me see nope group doesn't do it sorry I'm gonna control Z to get me out of that um, uh, oh yep that's what I have to do I have to turn them into a compound path so after I have all my road work done and everything is styled maybe I would go back and select all of my cased roads by selecting the actual objects on screen and then I would go to object compound path down here make and there we go that makes you have a nice clean intersection between your roads alright um, I think that's a good place to leave it for today uh, it's really powerful to have graphic style set up for all your different potential but do be careful not to always use the same template and, uh, and use the same graphic styles because then all your maps will always look the same. I have multiple different templates. I have one that's kind of an Old West style, one that's a modern style, one that's a natural style, and that includes different line work and colors that match that theme. So that's a way to go. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.